In a previous video, we talked extensively about Moss and many things that Moss's existence could imply for the story. Today, I would like to talk a bit about Ochi, some things that could come along with the addition of Ochi, and how Ochi could cause a problem for Pikmin. Hello everyone, you're watching Variety Television, and welcome to another Pikmin 4 video. Today, I'd really like to get a discussion started about Ochi. But before we get started, I'd like to remind you to check and see if you're subscribed, as many of you who watch these videos are not. Also, I'm working on the next comment suggested video. I won't say what it is yet, but it's another obscure title like we covered last time. Thank you all for helping me build this community up to 750 people. Just saying that is really unbelievable, and I'm very thankful to you all. Now, let's talk about Ochi. I think we can all agree that Ochi is going to be a very useful and versatile part of our adventure. He can carry objects, fight enemies, and even help carry around your Pikmin. Not only that, but he can smash pots, dig, swim, jump, and now you probably see where we're starting to run into problems. I know I'm not the only one who holds this opinion as many of you have stated similar sentiments in the comments section. The problem I mainly have is how Ochi can essentially be set up to almost fully replace any Pikmin type that you have. Almost. We see items available like the Scorch Guard and Thermal Guard for Ochi. With Chomp Training to increase Ochi's damage and the Scorch Guard to make him immune to fire, he becomes a giant red Pikmin that can swim and single-handedly carry up to 100 weight items. With the Thermal Guard and Ice Blast item, Ochi functions essentially as a more powerful Ice Pikmin. Ochi can swim and even dive underwater with enough training, which will eliminate the need for Blue Pikmin in some areas. I don't know for sure, but I bet there's an Electric Guard item and even some way Ochi could possibly smash through glass walls like a Rock Pikmin. A fully upgraded Ochi takes away the necessity of almost all Pikmin types. Not at once, but it can cover many. Let me give you an example of how far this could go. Let's say we're going out to explore a new area and we're trying to decide which Pikmin to bring along with us. Well, Ochi can swim and dive, so let's leave behind blue Pikmin for now. Ochi's attack and carry weight have been upgraded as well, so I guess we could leave behind purple Pikmin also. If we go ahead and equip the Scorch Guard, we can eliminate the need to bring reds entirely as we cover both of their abilities of damage and fire resistance. With the ability to change out your equipment, we could also go ahead and purchase the Thermal Guard and a handful of ice charges so that we don't need to bring any ice pigment either. We don't have any data on Ochi's dig speed, but if there's an electric guard, we can eliminate the need for yellows as well. The only things we don't have covered is poison, glass walls, and high up items. So if we bring a highly upgraded Ochi with all his gear as well, you could probably just roll with Ochi, Rock Pikmin, Winged Pikmin, and White Pikmin. And this is only assuming Ochi can't break glass or doesn't have a poison guard. If he does, then realistically you would only need Ochi and a full squad of Winged Pikmin. Of course, Nintendo knows this, and they've implemented ways to stop you from doing Ochi-only runs. Certain things like linking up circuits, burning hay, and other Pikmin-specific tasks cannot be performed by Ochi, meaning you'll still need actual Pikmin for these segments. If you haven't started seeing the problem by now, let me just say it clearly. Large portions of this game called Pikmin are going to be clearable without any Pikmin. This is where player choice is going to play a huge role in your experience. Other than the clay pots blocking the way, I don't think you actually need Ochi for anything else. You can totally choose to just use his charge on the pots and use Pikmin for everything else. Ochi is definitely here mainly for the kids who will be playing this game to kind of compensate for the strategy side and make the game easier for them to understand and play. If you choose not to use Ochi at his maximum potential, you can still have a fairly traditional and most likely more challenging experience. I think it was a good choice the way Nintendo worked in Ochi actually. Veteran players will be aware that they don't really need Ochi and can choose not to use him other than on the pods. Meanwhile, younger kids or just people who feel like using Ochi can still choose to use him and have him fill whatever role they need. 
Not to mention the fact that you can also choose fully how he is upgraded, so you can use Ochi without making him too overpowered. What do you think about Ochi in Pikmin 4? Will you use him or will you avoid using him at all? Do you think he's just overpowered or do you think player choice determines that fact completely? I'd love to hear your answers. Don't forget to leave a like if you enjoyed and consider subscribing if you made it this far. That's all I've got for now, but stay tuned. Variety Television will be right back.